questions come from people watching will show up here. Who watched the vice presidential debate tonight? Was it a shit show? Was it garbage? My favorite thing was when Pence said to Kane, there you go, pulling that Mexican thing out again. <laughs> and I thought to myself, hmm, what does he mean by Mexican thing? I like a Mexican thing every now and then. You know, Mexican things can be great. Oh, we have two viewers now. Say hi. So I was thinking I was, uh, somebody sent me something about uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And there was uh, an album with them looking like Star Wars. And it says, Return to Uranus. <laughs> and so I was laughing because it was like, you know, Return to Uranus is like as though it's a place. And then I thought of uh, High Anus Port. Where will gay people go on vacations? Hi, Joe. Hi, darling. It's just me in the bathtub. Are you coming home? <laughs> I'm crazy. Yes, I'm crazy. I'm in the bathtub waiting for you, my dear. Uh, so anyway, um, who did, did you watch? What did you like about the the vice presidential debate? Somebody kind of ruined it for me. Uh, when I saw it, it was what was it? A uh, Chris Prince. Somebody posted that he looks like the one guy from uh, from uh, Johnny Quest, and now he just he just absolutely ruined my life. So, yeah. Oh, Foster wants to talk about Lucian. Well, Lucian Piani from RuPaul's Drag Race. He is the guy that does the um, the music for RuPaul. He went on a Twitter rampage today because he says that he wasn't going to support Hillary. And so he kind of implied that he would actually prefer Trump because he feels like Trump speaks his mind. Even though everything that comes out of his mind uh, is kind of like racist and derogatory towards women, towards immigrants, towards all sorts of people. You know, he just trash talks, talks everything. So it became like a big Twitter war. All the blogs were blogging about it and covering it. Uh, covering it. And most people's reaction, I don't know if you've seen any of it, is like, who is this doofus with his white privilege just saying like LGBT rights don't matter, that there's other things, you know, that we have to be worried about. I guess he's worried about Muslims coming into the country or uh, maybe he's worried about uh, not having a big enough wall to keep he and uh, RuPaul away from those Mexicans. So... Um, yeah. And so anyway, it's, it's be interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Especially because RuPaul was just saying that she's like this huge Hillary support. Uh, and I, as far as I know, she hasn't actually said anything yet on Twitter. Hi, Vice Diaz. Vice is the one that turned me on to, um, Lucian Piani's Twitter breakdown. Vice, did, uh... Did RuPaul respond to it yet? Did she say anything about it? No, not yet. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. All the drag queens, Pandora box, they're all like saying like, what the fuck is going on? You know, stick to music, and even that you're not very good at. <laughs> Although some people really like his music, and other people are like, yeah. My name is Lucian Piani, and I got something to say. <laughs> What do you have to say? You done fucked up, girl. <laughs> so let's cl let's break this apart right now, right okay. now here, honey, child. We ran across Lucian Piani years ago. He is the composer for that viral hit that had Barbara Streisand cussing out. Oh, really? He did that? He's the guy who did that. Oh, Lucian no Piani idea. also is responsible for the viral hit where uh, Christian Bale on the set of Batman is cussing out he, one of the actors and he, he turned it into a, like, a hit song. Oh. So that song that everybody's her hearing like where Christian Bale's like cussing out, that's what got him his uh, internet fame and notoriety, mm -hmm. which led him to collaborating with a very personable blogger named Perez Hilton. Oh. On the song The Clap. The Jesse, clap. stop licking the screen. He's, he's attracted <laughs> to the Epsom salts. 
Yes, girl. I know all about Lucian Piani, and I'm putting him on blast because we, over the last 12 years, have invited him to come on the podcast, and he said, this is not a media project that he's interested in. <laughs> Even though RuPaul, every judge on RuPaul's Drag Race, pretty yeah. much every drag queen, he's, he feels better than us. Than them. Oh. Okay. Well, he also, he like, feels more listen. important. This guy, let well, me just clarify, some people, but, but some hold on, don't let me the finish. Chops. They don't have the chops for it. Let me finish here. Okay. In his defense, he is representing a voice of disgruntled American voters mm -hmm. who feel that they've already lost the election by being forced to choose between Trump right. and Hillary Clinton. But as John Oliver on this week tonight, is the yep. name of the show, HBO says, that it's not necessarily the lesser of two evils, but a very big evil, yes. which is Trump, and a modest, moderate evil like mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, Lucian Piani is somebody who wants to be involved, has, I would say, it has a good heart. He does a lot of creative work. Uh, okay. I think his music with RuPaul is interesting. Okay. And, and um, he is just misinformed, and he's putting his foot in his mouth. Like Fifi. And then he's too, yeah, the ego is too big. To and his ego is too big. He doesn't want to listen. He doesn't want, he's not interested in listening. He's not interested in having a conversation. He, w right. he won't talk to us. He's not going to talk to you. He's not going to talk to anybody. He might insult you on Twitter and Twitter and say that it's free speech and he's going to complain about the left. That's what he's basically doing. He's saying the left wing, and they're being a thought police. They're trying to close down the conversation. They yeah. don't want people to know. So. And I think it's kind of crazy that, that uh, Lucian calls... People who are supporting Hillary, or this is where I get the problem, is that two what? things, he calls it the liberal media. We the media, you the media. And so I'm like, I'm so, he, he, he creates this distinction between conservative media and liberal media, which there really isn't any. Um, because, you know, everybody has an agenda and everybody's financed by somebody. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a user generated or public generated financed media like us. Yeah. Or it's corporate finance media, or it's um, like the Huffington Post, which has its own agenda. What's so, agenda? but everybody is part of the media, and everybody has a voice mm -hmm. and a, and something to say. That said, um, Lucian Piani is is you know, he's just handling this really really poorly. Mm. Bigger things to talk about, boys. He is barely D list. No hate. Well, it was you know it was all over the Facebook, all over Twitter, and, and, and so, it's so much that that, 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 that it might cost him yeah. his job right. on RuPaul's Drag Race. I doubt, I doubt it. Uh, you know, because he's basically the person who scores the TV show. Oh. So if you guys are fans of RuPaul's Drag Race, this is a uh, PR meltdown that happened today, mm -hmm. and um, where it's curious to see how the show and how the producers and. Uh, are going to handle it, probably what they're yeah. going to do is just ignore it and hope it yeah. goes away. Well, especially also, too, is like really we're hearing from the voices of people of color and Sean Michael Haas, ha, I'm sure that's. Hossinger. <laughs> Mark Designer's glasses. Right. On. I was I was doing my RuPaulism, and so I'm sure you know you know you're probably a white guy, maybe you're not. I can't tell from your icon, but for people of color, they really seem affected by this because they're all they're very very like, hey, listen, if this Trump guy gets in, we're gonna it's be living for hell. You. It's you have you have given all these people that belong to the KKK, these people that have guns, you've validated their interests, and uh, sometimes you know when you when you invalidate their interests, they're emboldened and they do stuff. You know, sometimes when people are disenfranchised, they still do stuff. But a lot of times, you know, when you win an election, you can really change people's mindset. People that support Trump, once Hillary is in office, are pretty much going to just shut up. I mean, there's still going to be assholes out there that do stuff, but they're not going to feel like they're fighting as passionately. Elections get people really stirred up. And there's they, never been yeah. a candidate running for U.S. President in a major ticket mm -hmm. that is more closely aligned with white supremacists than Donald Trump. Mm, I, you know what? I don't probably. I, I, I beg to differ. I'm sure there are probably presidents. You think the Bush? Oh my God! Well, not in modern history. Yes, in modern history. In the last fifty years. You know, but certainly, you know, turn of the century, the 1800s. You know, all, all the you know, Lyndon B. Johnson was. They say was a terrible racist. So it's yeah. You just never know. So you know that that's. I think that's what Lucian. You know, when you're in a situation when you're getting a mm -hmm. lot of money. 
and you're getting a lot of attention, uh, right. it's, it's important to right. be able to listen right. and have a conversation with people you disagree with. And so if you're posting on social media and you're not willing to have that conversation to listen, mm -hmm. then it's probably best that you don't participate in that because ultimately it's gonna hurt your career and hurt your opportunities. Yeah. And I think Lucian Piani would do himself a world of good uh, just to delete his Twitter account and, and to- Take a break from take it. Take a break from it, because it's, it's not helping him make music and it's not helping RuPaul's Drag Race stay on the air, which yeah. is ultimately the goal that we right. love that show and we love what comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And this is not constructive. Right. And there's so, especially when you're, you're part of your career and why you're known from is an LGBT television show. I know it's about Drag Race and you don't have to be gay to be on it or anything because they do actually have some straight women on there every now and then as judges. But it's, it's a gay show. It's aimed for us. And it's aimed for us. And you, you represent that show. And it's uh, our agenda should be the agenda you're pushing forward. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, you know, RuPaul has stated that he has no problem uh, crossing the picket line. No. Uh, and shopping uh, for anti-gay, doing business with or, or buying stuff from anti-gay businesses. Right. Because he feels that that's, that's not... Um, well, there's, there's only so much you can do. It's like, yeah. do well, I with the Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, the Dolce & Gabbana shoes. Who like they that. said that like um, uh, yeah. Elton John's children were, were not real children. Oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and so uh, RuPaul said, I don't really care. You know? And, you know? and other people that RuPaul aligns himself with do care and, and said that they're mm -hmm. not going to be crossing that picket line. Right. But RuPaul said it's not important to him. So it's okay. It's just a TV show. Right. Moving on, but the, but the important thing I think was the debate was kind of boring, and yeah. uh, and and also what was really distressing was that the moderator just let these candidates I talk over like each that. other, and now I thought it was I the worst moderator yet. No, no, no. I Absolutely. think you're I think you're hard, judging her on a harsh curve. Uh, first of all, her makeup was flawless. She was painted like a queen. Can we stop talking about makeup and dresses? I mean, <laughs> Hillary but, Clinton, you know, Mary J. Blige, yeah. at that interview, and her first question is like her dress and her makeup, and I'm like, girl, you're running for president of the United States. It's you know? fashion, though. It's fashion. She looked gorgeous. And so I think, you know, maybe you were dazzled by her beauty, thinking that she wasn't doing her job. And it's important, when you're a moderator, you have to judge what you feel is going on. You can't just pull out, like, a gavel, like a judge, and be like, order in the court, I want to speak. Then shut up question. and let them fight, fight it out. She, she, she did. didn't either. Because they start arguing with each other, and she's like, guys, guys, I can't understand mm -hmm. either of you. But she yeah. doesn't make any attempt to get right. their attention or to cut off their microphones. Mm. Well, she's you know? not going to do that. It's, Why not? Because it was it's it was, her show. It was a civilized discord. So about yeah. about I mean Tim Kaine, what a brilliant man when you put him up and get Mike, you know, up against Pence. I don't uh, know. I think Mike like, Kane he, didn't do well. I think. Oh, I think he did brilliantly. I think he was wonderful. I uh, loved it when he just rattled off all these terrible things that uh, Trump has done, and <laughs> Pence was like. Wow, you really rehearsed that, didn't you? And, yeah. I He's prepared like, the question. I for prepared. the debate. You know, of course Is that I a did. Crime? You know, it was it was it was really uh, Kane really kind of roasted yeah. Trump on so many levels. He doesn't have the the humor that uh, Joe Biden did. I just absolutely adored uh, the Joe Biden Sarah Palin one because he was just like, what? I mean, because you know Pence is more of a real threat. Sarah Palin was never a threat. You know. See, I miss Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. Ugh. You know, I, w I part of me wish Trump had picked her. Because then he, we would have really known that he was just joking about doing it. No, but he's serious. And, and the thing of Mike okay. Pence is that he was talking in the debate as if he's running for president. Okay. As if he's trying to somewhat create some distance with Trump. So if Trump, God willing, loses this election, which I'm hoping he does. I hope he does. Um, Pence will still be around, and mm -hmm. he's going to be yeah. wanting to yeah. run under the Republican ticket in the coming years. Well, and also, too, like, I'm sorry, also, too, like, if, if Trump wins, we, we know for sure he would become impeached probably within the first week. <laughs> you know, there'd be, if they're able to get control of the Senate, that could happen. Uh, and so Pence is just thinking, hey, you know, I want this guy to become president because I'll become president when he just even, like, he'll just step down. He'll be like, I don't want to do this anymore. He has got no attention span. That's the thing that everybody says about him he's just he has ada and just can't concentrate on anything so he's just trying to jump on in there the puppy vote jesse Aww. the puppy ventura yeah. guys give me a little hearts if you're watching for jesse mm -hmm. oh, jesse's leaving because jesse's leaving he didn't get he's, enough hearts he didn't get any hearts no hearts for them how's your workout darling 
It was good. I'm really tired. We're, we're really frustrated. Uh, our financial situation is really bad. And uh, so we're scrambling like mad trying to make up for the losses that we face. And yeah. uh, so we're like, gah, 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 gah. So and, we'll probably be doing a Kickstarter soon. <laughs> Otherwise, it's... What's so, that? Was that Kim, Kim, Kim Cheese impersonation of Kim Jong Il? <laughs> cool we'll fun, see. Huh? Do you guys like seeing Mark in his tub? His tub awesome. casting? Watch, watch it. Watch my. It's so watery. <laughs> Man, I feel Jesse like. Uh, just absolutely licking the, everything, yeah. He just wants it all. Yeah, Mike Pence is going to be your new president in 2020. Well, the lawsuit, I can't speak about that. I cannot talk about the lawsuit, but uh, right now it's still uh, in uh, flux. Yes. So Eon flux. And it may not be ever resolved, so we're just kind of like, uh, under legal advisement, we're just waiting to see what happens, you know? Yes. So okay. right now, Jesse's, Jesse, stop licking shit. Lick He's going to knock that phone into I the know. tub, and that's the end of it. And that's an unknown thing for me. You. Oh, you're gonna make him growl? Yeah. Here, Faust is gonna make him growl. Okay. Good job, but don't kiss it. Making out with the baby. Aww. Oh, I love this dog so much. I'm waiting to be downloaded the debate. Oh, so some people in Asian countries yeah. and on foreign countries didn't get them. Oh, I watched it at the gym on Facebook Live on PBS. PBS just did a Facebook Live with it, and it was just, I loved it because you got to see people's comments in real time, and give hearts, and I gave hearts, and I gave thumbs up, and I made scary faces when uh, Ever Pence was speaking. So we have, a, on our YouTube channel, tomorrow, we have Ginger Minge spilling all the tea on RuPaul's Drag Race. Much tea. Unfortunately, we got her a couple days too late to weigh on Lucian Piani. I know. Uh, but, uh, you know... In defense, leave Lucian Piani alone. As Christopher, <laughs> Chris, Christopher Crocker said about Britney Spears. Well, this is the thing about Lucian too: is he was a Bernie bro, right? He was a Bernie. He bro. was so he was into Bernie because he thought Hillary was very corrupt, and uh, you know a lot of people feel that she is. And whether you do or not, it's really at this point in time is like the super corrupt politician or the not so super corrupt. It's we, we Hillary's job right yeah. now to. Make Changed. voters excited about her mm -hmm. and get people to vote for her. Yes. I think the strategy of like, you know, Donald Trump is a nightmare of a president, but she will not get elected and we will have Trump as a president if all this discussion that we're having, her supporters are having, is about how awful Trump is and not about what we have to look forward about Hillary Clinton as a candidate. Mm. And so we really need to remind ourselves to talk about what we like about Hillary Clinton. What, what, do we, what is interesting to us? What makes her a, a, a great candidate for President of the United States? And actually, like, I really like how she actually handled Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Mary J. Blige is singing to her and she's like, Okay, this is, you know, she's she's sing, rolling with it. Sing the song for it. If you. a cop pulls you over, make sure that he sees your hands. And never, never talk back to the cop. This, this is your life. You can get murdered just for being black. I mean, American, American skin. skin. Yes. So, so you watched the whole app, the whole thing. Right? I watched the and whole thing. Basically, Apple has a podcast now. Is that right? Is it so it is? Apple is producing podcasts, uh, which took them long enough. How many years is it? <laughs> Twelve years. Twelve years. Uh, you know, so they're actually putting money into uh, the Apple Music platform, and they're creating not just music; uh, they're actually creating media. Um, so with Mary J. Blige, Mary J. Blige now has a regular series called the 411, like the information. Yes. Pe black people love the 411. The 411. They and actually, that, if you call 411, you can actually get information. Mm -hmm. Right? And so yeah. Mary J. Blige is giving you the 411 mm -hmm. on, on the interviews. But the thing about that I love about Mary J. Blige is that she interviews people like a child who just got a baby bunny for Easter. Oh, she strangles it? No, <laughs> she's like, oh, I finally have my own talk show. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. It's so soft. Oh, I love this baby bunny. Oh. You know, it's it's like she is super gentle, super sweet, super uh, um, innocent in yeah. some ways, you know, in dealing with Hillary Clinton, who... Does she seem high to you? No, no. I no. think she is very on the level and stuff. I think she's very humble and she's very nervous. And literally the first reminds, 10 minutes yeah. of her interview was her talking about like, I'm so nervous. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my God, I can't believe that you did this. You know, and, and, and I could see Hillary Clinton's face going, God, please don't let me live to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was really entertaining. If you guys have Apple Music, uh, a subscription, you is can, it free? it's free oh, if yeah, you have yeah. Apple Music. It's 10 bucks a month like Netflix or Feast of Fun. And um, you can uh, access that and uh, listen to her on it and see what you guys think. I don't know if, if it's something that'll catch on um, since she had such a high profile cat, a guest. Mm -hmm. Are they going to continue having high profile guests? Is it going to be more, you know, lifestyle oriented guests or is it going to be more music industry people? So it's, it's you know, it has, it has a potential. And I'm really glad that uh, Apple's finally trying to monetize podcasting. And um, and doing something interesting and their own content mm -hmm. for Apple Music, so I I think it's oh. it's definitely a good start. At the same time, I'm obsessed with her, you know, singing and acting her I'm, best. I'm obsessed know? with her Sia and, and, and inspired eyebrows. Or I'm sorry, her hairline comes down like underneath. You know, Mary J. Blige probably doesn't have eyebrows, and so she's just like, I'll just cover these up with my hair. Yeah. You know? Did anybody here is watching this actually see it? What? Can you weigh in? She's got that's... she's cutthroats and unapologetic. She slays them all. Mm. We're not sure who she's talking. about. Well, maybe we can get a job at Apple. Should we have a Should we have a podcast on on iTunes? That would be a great idea. <laughs> so, guys, if you're watching this and you are not familiar with who we are, or what we do, we have a podcast on iTunes called Feast of Fun, and it's uh, available free. Uh, for a small fee, uh, you can get all of our shows on feastoffun.com slash plus, where you can financially support these projects that we work on, like Cooking with Drag Queens and Feast of Fun Podcast. We do uh, an incredible, mm -hmm. if I should say so myself, uh, in-depth interviews with LGBT artists, drag queens, outrageous people. We also have fantastic t-shirts from our store. So why don't you just grab that t-shirt that's hanging right there. What? The black one. Get up. Faust has got sciatica, but then now it's almost over. And so if you can visit our store at feastoffun.com slash store or just store.feastoffun.com. And uh, Fausto designs many of these. Some of them are inspired by me. I think I may have inspired this one. It says, I'm not... This is the one. I, I was like noticing all the drag queens saying, I'm not an evil queen. Get the hell out of there. I'm not an evil queen. I just got a bad edit. And it's really sparkly. I don't yeah. know... The, the uh, color correction kind of... Yeah, so it's, it's a little more of... It's vibrantly more like violet. So there you go. That's you much better. You can kind of see and that. So you see that sparkle there? So this is some good stuff right there. You see how that... Isn't that gorgeous? You yes. see how it picks up the light? And it's perfect to wear at Halloween. You'd be like... Because it's kind of Halloween inspired. It's, so someone's asking why yeah. don't we have mugs, hoodies... What we do have mugs and hoodies and of, of the I'm not an evil queen. I just got a bad edit, oh. so I'm gonna make. Oh yeah. I'm gonna make one that's uh, that's um. I'm gonna make one that's not sparkly, but it's a little bit more uh, subdued. Okay. And uh, you can get a mug because I think everybody wants those black mugs. They do. Well, saying well, I'm not evil queen, and we're also gonna have hoodies and then tote bags and long sleeve shirts because the. Weather's getting cool. Mm -hmm. And we absolutely adore getting photos from uh, listeners that send us pictures of them in the, their dresses. You can actually get some of those t-shirts on there as a dress. Uh, the, that cock, the one with the giant cock, the rooster, that looks makes a fantastic dress. And we got a, a photo from Warren just today who got the unicorns puking uh, cups. The nice. He's, he's got a pair and they're so cute because it looks like they're both <laughs> puking into the same pile. It's so, awesome. uh, Je Jenica wants to know what's happening in Coco the Drag Queen. So, right now, uh, we're producing uh, four more shows uh, to wrap up the year. And uh, they're coming out once a month. Mm -hmm. So, the one with Joan Waters is coming uh, very soon. Either yeah. I'm hoping this Thursday. Next, uh, this Thursday or, this Thursday Thursday or Monday. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, it's gonna come up, and then we have another one with Kitty Powers that's inspired by the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm -hmm. um, that's coming uh, later in the week of uh, later in the month of mm -hmm. October. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, and Cookie White Drag Queen costs mm -hmm. a lot of money to produce. So I don't know how much longer we're gonna do it. If we're gonna do another Kickstarter for it, we change it around a little bit, but, simplify uh, it. It's it's a definitely a very well received, very popular mm -hmm. uh, series oh. that is also uh, very expensive to make. And um, right now we uh, are looking for uh, ways to monetize that audience mm -hmm. uh, that actually covers our bills. So, uh, Jenica, no one ever does Rocky. So she's really excited about the Rocky Horror Picture mm -hmm. Show. The funny thing is, between you and me, is that the drag queen we had on, she looked like Dr. Frankenfurter, but her personality was like Riff Raff. <laughs> very subdued and very mm -hmm. elegant, very British, you mm -hmm. know. So we, Mark and I, uh, dressed up as um, unconventional conventionists. conventionists. The, the, the tuxedo the, jackets and our party hats and our... Party favors. The extras in the Time Warp right. and uh, and uh, Sweet Transvestite right. in Rocky Horror Picture Show, and so we paid tribute to them. We're actually doing a whole podcast about these people, the actors who play those characters, uh, coming in October, where we uh, delve into their lives. What were their lives like um, since the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Did you know, for example? That one of them actually married Richard O'Brien, the uh, the writer and the mm -hmm. actor who played Ray Fraff, mm -hmm. and uh, two of the actors. I think she there, had. I think she had his kids. She a had kid. a, a kid with a Richard O'Brien. Mm -hmm. One of the unconventional mm -hmm. conventionists married Ray mm -hmm. Fraff, and it's not the old lady with the purple hair. <laughs> it's not her because those eggs were gone. And two of the actors. Uh, went on to being cast members in Star Wars. What was the che Chewbacca stand-in? Uh, one of them was a stand The really tall one was a stand-in for Chewbacca and for Darth Vader. Oh, he did both. Yeah, so when they needed, like, someone to stand in there and they set the lights around mm -hmm. them, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so they would get into the costume as Chewbacca or Darth Vader and they would set the lights on. The guy, the tall guy who's, like, you know, standing with the long hair... He was Darth Vader in the mm -hmm. first Star Wars film. Oh, speaking of Darth... And, and in addition to Richard Prowse, the bodybuilder mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. put on the suit and did Darth Vader right. that we know. So yeah, we're on conventional conventions. We make a fantastic dessert, so hopefully that'll be out before Halloween, and you'll enjoy that. You know, speaking of Star Wars, what's the one that's coming out in December? Or the, one, the new one that's coming out, or the next one that's coming a out? A uh, Rogue what? One. Rogue One. I'm actually excited about that. That's right. that's much more interesting okay. than uh, the the other uh, Star mm -hmm. Wars movie. Uh, and what was the Return of the... What was the last one that came Force out? Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. And who's the guy on YouTube? We watched the video Plank yesterday. Plankett. Plankett. So Plankett just Red released... Red Letter Media. Red Letter Media just released another video. It was just yesterday. And it was all like the 10 things you didn't know about like... Uh, uh, that movie. <laughs> I forget the title. because Well, it's, it's a very yeah. long documentary okay. that he made explaining about yeah. the history of Star Wars yeah. Yeah. and the, the, the prequels mm -hmm. and then how The Force Awakens was kind of, you know, mm -hmm. not... It was a fun movie, right. but it failed on some yeah. ways. Yeah. And so he explains yeah. how. And then in the... Uh, in the in Number the, eight. What the, the the number eight because he had ten points and the number the number eight point was the most fantastical because it had an LGBT angle to it. So number eight and in the thing he yeah. talks about the homosexuality in the Star Wars universe, which is really funny. Which is and it showed all of these fucking Star Wars characters who appeared gay, but this is the one that really kind of blew my mind. I I haven't really paid attention to. I don't know if I want to ruin it. Should I spoil it? Or should people just go watch it? So they say actually that the chick, the lead in that, she's the reincarn reincarnation of Darth Vader. The Darth Vader's mind left that, you know, that okay, old, old guy let's, let's and find... went in, into that baby. So what uh, Plankett is saying in his video that Mark misunderstood what? is that um, the, the, the spirit of Anakin Skywalker when he mm -hmm. died yeah. and on the funeral pyre mm -hmm. uh, because he has the force he somehow leapt, leapt into a um, baby a baby which turns out to be they called her a vengeance a virgin turns they called out her to be the, the woman in the in the um, force awakens yeah. what's her name again I'm I forget out her name the chick the chick not yeah. the black guy not the latino but the woman <laughs> with the uh. British woman <laughs> 
So uh, she, I guess, in the future movies, is expected to turn to the dark side and is going yeah. to ultimately be redeemed. Mm-hmm. So we'll get to finally see a female villain yeah. in the Star Wars universe who is worth her salt. But is she transgender? Because Anakin was a dude, yes. and now he is inside of a girl. A girl. And so what's going to happen? It's going to be know? a trans, once again, a trans villain And will she movie. be a trans lesbian? I, or some people, when they transition, they, like, if you're a guy and you transition to a girl, it's like sometimes all of a sudden you just start liking guys. You know, there's a lot of people, once they transition, kind of, you know, they just become queer all over. So everybody is really, they are... Not happy. They're mad at Lucian. Hold on a second. Okay. Let's clarify here. Okay. They're mad at Lucian for uh, talking about Trump and, uh, and yeah. Hillary and, and how he doesn't mind having Trump as a president because mm-hmm. he feels Hillary's very corrupt. Yeah. Uh, they're mad at us for this towel storage okay. situation. So sell them that window. What is there to see? So here's the... This is the thing right up here. So... This is a window to the outside. It is a light on an alley. They just want us to fold the towels and make it look They're, They are folded. They just, you know, I pull... The thing is, is that I take towels out of there to go to the gym, and there are different styles of towels than other towels. You know, I could have all the same towels, but I, I don't always want big towels. And, you know, sometimes you can't. When you're folding up your towels... And if you put a cabinet there... Make... Sh- listen, listen, shut up, Hillary. I'm singing. <laughs> When you're folding up your towels, make sure they're folded nice and neat. And never let them pile up in a nasty bunch like this. Please organize them well. This is your bathroom. This is your shower. (laughs) This is your dick. But I'm not gonna show it to no, you. No, it's covered up. You can show it. It is? Yeah, it's covered up. This is your dick. <laughs> Guys, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you for joining us and live. 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 Next time I'll do balloon sitting for you. Okay. I'll a little kiss. Mm-hmm. Show Jesse. And this is Jesse. Dun, dun. And now, 20 minutes of a dog licking his nuts. Are you guys ready for this? Get. Ernie. Yes. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Growl for me. Try to bite me. Rawr, 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 rawr. Rawr, rawr. He's vicious. <laughs> and you know what? Who's really scared of Jesse? Who? Is Darian Lake. Oh, yeah. She's like, keep that dog away from me. And what? Jesse's like trying to lick her butt because mm-hmm. she smells like donuts, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and Jesse was like, I had a boner and started trying to hump her. And she like got on all fours. And then started putting peanut butter on her pussy. And he started licking it. And she got so horny and stuff. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. We didn't show that because I felt yeah. that was not, you know, family friendly you know, for you know, she did tell us to lock the dog up. But he got, you know. He got out and started out, eating her right. out. And, and so I thought it was because she was afraid of dogs. She's horny. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, guys. We're going to finish this. Bye. Bye.